Bruce Lynn started this company right here in his own garage. He hopes to one day make this a large company and sell his mats statewide. To get your private plane license, which is the most basic certificate they offer, you only have to log 40 hours of flight time. Georgia has always been known for Southern rock, R&B, gospel, but what you may not know is that Georgia musicians are making their mark on the country music industry. Just about a month's supply of coal rests here at UGA's coal plant, which equals about 2,000 tons. Laura Edison and Kenny Kotani may just seem like they are milking cows. But don't let this fool you. They have a better chance getting a job after graduation than any other student at UGA. They didn't have much uh, large animal experience here. And then this showed up. And vet schools look for large animal experience. So this is like a big help and big boost for my resume. Agriculture is the largest industry in Georgia. The demand for the employees is great. Only about half of the employees hired in the state of Georgia come from Georgia. The Ag School Dean says there are not enough students to meet the demand. Now these are college educated positions, they are, they are good paying, very interesting jobs. But we just don't have enough students in the College of Agriculture to meet the demands for what is the largest industry in the state. So exactly what are these jobs? Dean Angle says these are business management type positions in industries like poultry and dairy. One ag student said he even dropped his business major because of employment opportunities in agriculture. I was a pre-business major to begin with and after all my friends couldn't get jobs out of college and just having a tough time and having to go to grad school when they couldn't afford it, um, I chose to go in a business portion of agriculture um, with the job offers being there. Dean Engel says his students have about seven job offers by graduation and the second highest entry level salaries on campus. From Grady College, I'm Allison Stewart, WNEG, Northeast Georgia. President Obama is proposing a significant tariff on tires imported from China. Now China wants to retaliate by imposing a tax on U.S. goods, but this is mostly about poultry that might end up being catastrophic for the for the Georgia poultry industry. That's because poultry is an 18 billion dollar industry in Georgia. It employs more than 100,000 people. So here's what this will mean. If this tariff is imposed, it will cost Georgia farmers who work in buildings like this more to export chicken to China. As a result, China will buy less of it and this will create a surplus for Georgia farmers. Uh, you know, China is a, is a two billion uh, uh, person economy. It's, there are lots of mouths to feed there, and it's a huge market for any kind of agricultural, uh, agricultural product. If some chicken producers can't find other markets quickly, they may be forced out of business. Uh, so maybe this is a good time for them to explore other markets or to explore other business options and just prepare for the rainy day. Um, in case this happens. But don't worry yet, there is some good news too. Chatterjee says both nations could back down. Also, people who eat chicken could benefit from lower prices. From Grady College, I'm Allison Stewart, WNEG, Northeast Georgia. Brittany Fletcher began working at Black Forest Bakery while she went to Cedar Shoals High School. When she found out the owners were selling the business, she had a big decision to make. But could she find the money? just turned out that this was such a good opportunity, yeah. it wasn't worth it to give it up. So I took part of my college money and um, I had saved every check that I got from working at Black Forest and I used that and part of my college money to buy it. Along with half my grandparents put in half of their money. A few months after graduation, she was the full-time owner of the bakery and was living out her dream. And it just, it's so weird how I didn't even have to go to school and my actual dream came true before that. Brittany says growing up in Athens has really helped her business. Every Friday, groups of local students come by to take a bite of these delicious treats. Black Forest Bakery is also a family business. Brittany's brother works for her. So does her boyfriend. And her grandparents do too to keep track of their investment. Brittany says being young works to her advantage. It's, I think for the most part, people really like it that someone as young as I am is doing something like this. Brittany loves being the owner because she gets to change her recipes every day. From Grady College, I'm Allison Stewart, WNEG, Northeast Georgia. So it was a super chilly morning, but it turned out to be a beautiful fall day. Let's take a look at our current conditions. Right now it's 60 degrees outside with a humidity of 69%. Winds are coming in from the west-northwest at 6 miles per hour and the barometer is steady at 30.22 inches. 
Now looking into our radar, it's, cl it's clear, no clouds in sight, so it should be gorgeous as we go into tonight. Currently, it's about low 70s across northeast Georgia, 71 in Gainesville, 72 in Athens, and 71 in Toccoa. Now tonight's forecast, it should be mostly clear with an overnight low of 41 degrees. Tonight, the sun will set at 4.36 p.m. and the sun will rise at 6.53 a.m. And I'm Allison Stewart. We have breaking news about a search for an armed suspect. Kevin Character is here in the newsroom to tell us what's going on. Kevin? President Adams addresses the money situation. Brendan Cosgrove is in the newsroom. Coming is full of surprises this year. Kevin Character shows us what some student organizations are doing to prepare for the big weekend. The parade will start at 6 p.m. Friday and will roll down Clayton Street downtown. It has been over a month since the Georgia Bulldogs played a home game in Athens. So this weekend's home game against Tennessee Tech will be a homecoming in more ways than one. Earlier in the show, Kevin Character told us about a search for an armed suspect. He has new updates. That's right. And the action should really start to kick off now that construction is pretty much done. Welcome to GAC's Top 20. I'm Allison Stewart. For this edition of your countdown, we are coming to you from the place to be for country fans this weekend who are looking for little live music and a great time. It's Country Thunder here at Twin Lakes, Wisconsin. It's a four day festival with a lineup that has some of the biggest stars in country music taking the stage. And to get there, they're going to have to get through us. We'll cast a net out into the crowd and see what fans we can pull in. And hey, big news on the countdown last week when Billy Currington stopped Kelly's six-week run at the top spot. Can he get a streak of his own started this week? We'll find out together. Kicking off this week's list, it's Mr. Daryl Worley. At number 20, here is Sounds Like Life. 20, Allison Stewart here at Twin Lakes, Wisconsin for the Country Thunder Music Festival. Now, before we get to the next video, a quick reminder for super fans. There's only about one week left in our Sharpie 500 Race Weekend Sweepstakes. It's easy to enter. Just go to the super fan page on GACTV.com and click on the Sharpie ad. And super fans, don't worry. Your bonus code word of the week is coming up a little later on in the show. Right now, let's carry on with the countdown race. It's Dirk Spentley making a move on the outside. At number 11, here is Sideways. That's the debut of Jimmy Wayne's latest, I'll Be That, Bows in at number 19. Grab it as a ringtone for your phone at GACTV.com. Well, we'll take a break, but so much more is coming your way at Country Thunder. We'll have visits with as many performers as we can find. Top 20 from Country Thunder is coming right back.